Hiya, this is Michael Shakib again from Swansea University and Project Metal, and I wanted to just make another video, a continuation on the theme using the mean linear intercept method, and in this case using it to measure the grain size of a single phase polycrystalline material. Um, something I didn't mention in the last video, bear in mind that you know you can use a mean linear intercept method for measuring pretty much anything. Um, yeah, I mean once you know how to use it, it's a good tool to, to measure anything on screen. In the last video we went into a fair amount of detail and we found out from this image here that we have an average grain size of 58.8 microns and go back to the last video if you want to see how that's done. But I had a bit of a realisation after I did it that I'd never really used Microsoft PowerPoint before to perform the mean linear intercept method and I realised after doing it then yeah, it, that it can definitely be done. And so in this video I'm going to show you how uh, we can go about doing it and how we can go about doing it so it falls in line with this standard here or any other or the ASTM standard all right so if I go on to the next slide and I've taken all of the information away apart from this 1500 micron mag bar well the 500 micron mag bar and the 1500 micron test line so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in okay and what I've done here is I've drawn, and in fact I'm going to do it again, if I go to shapes and if I insert a line there, I'm going to make it a bit thicker so we can see it, okay, and I'm going to zoom in quite a lot here, line it up with the mag bar and I'll use this size function here and I'll just increase the length of the line. There we go. So the blue line is pretty much in between the 500 micron and mag bar. And it's a bit difficult to see that. So I'm going to change the color to yellow. I think that's a bit easier to see. All right then. So now we know that, that yellow line is 500 microns. Now what I want to do is find out what the length of that yellow line is. And I know it's 4.7. I wouldn't particularly worry at this moment in time about the unit. Okay, just say it's, it's 4.7. So I'm going to times that by 3. So 4.7 times 3. 14.1. So if I type in there 14.1. Okay. Now that should be, in theory, I run about the same length as the red line. Ah, oh, which it is. Brilliant. Okay, don't get confused here. Um, you know, thinking that you know, you should always always use a test line that's fifteen hundred microns. You can make this length. You can make this line however long you like. I've just made it fifteen hundred microns because it's three times five hundred. In this case, it's quite an easy number to work with. I could have doubled the length of the test line. I could have left it at five hundred microns. I could have halved the length of the test line. I can make the line as long as I want. It just goes well with this image. All right, so, you know, keep that in mind. Now then, what else can I do? Well, let's get rid of this red line for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Command Copy and Command V, which is on a Mac, and just make a few of these lines here. Now, the standard says that you should do at least five intercepts, five five test lines. So what I've done here is just make five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, at this point, you can just do your mean linear intercept method as per previous video, yeah? You can just count the number of intercepts or intersects and then do the same for the other line, do the same for the other line, and so on. And what you can also do as well is if I group these together, it gives us a fairly neat way of just rotating. And so now we can do exactly the same method, but the lines are rotated. And this gives us some directionality to the grain structure as well. So for those of you who have got Microsoft PowerPoint and who are used to using it, I think this is a pretty good way of doing it. I've never done it before, and I'm sure there are going to be people who say that, um, you know, it's not the best way of doing it. And it's true, it probably isn't the best way of doing it, because there is quite one thing you have to make sure of, is that if you resize this image in any way, 
you've basically lost all calibration. You're going to have to go back and do exactly the same thing as you did before. Because now these lines here have got no relation to this mag bar at all. So we'll go back and resize it. So that's a, a method for doing it in Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, it's time consuming. Yeah, it's very time consuming. If you're going to do this, you know, the more, the more lines you do, the better. Um, so yeah, I think you can appreciate that. Now, one way I would set this out as well is if you've got a spreadsheet here, this is what you could do is that you can have a spreadsheet on the, on the other side of the screen and you can count the number of intercepts. Okay. And you can put that in. So in this case, I've said line one and I've said it's 18 intercepts. You can count the number of triple points and you can set up a really simple equation to say um, P, which is, if I go back to the previous slide, what is P? P is the number of grain boundaries intersected. Okay. What you can do, in fact, let's go back to that graphic. That would be a bit easier to show you. And I'll move this down here. Move that in a bit there, so we can see. So the whole number of intercepts or intersects, intersects in this point at the at this in this in this particular uh, video, we got eighteen. Triple points five. That's all I've done is is count the number here, and so P is equal eighteen, which is the whole number of intersects, plus. Um, the number of triple points multiplied by 1.5 and you should you should go back to the previous video if you don't know why that comes about and in this case we know the length of our test line is 1500 micrometers and the mean linear intercept is simply dividing one by the other so you're exactly the same number here so if you set yourself up a table um, it might be easier for you to do this method and again I'll say it again you can start to see how time consuming this method can be so in the next video, we're going to look at another um, program which we can use to do this. And it's called Image J. And the reason why I'm going to show it to you is, the, well, the premise of the whole, the whole thing is, on, is, is centered around the same premise. Um, however, Image J is free. And so that may be something that, you're, um, that you might be interested in. And also, it's a really good program. So if you get into it, you know, you, you can do a lot more with it than just use this. Okay, so thanks for listening again. Any questions, just send an email or just put in a comment below. Thanks, bye.